Hey beloved, Krista Pettiford here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome for the first time. I share prophetic encouragement, real life advice, biblical insight, and prayer to encourage the hearts of women who are navigating the seasons of life, especially midlife. Today's video is going to help you know the season you're in, get rid of fear, and make room for God to move. And so the other day, I listened to a video podcast by Crystal Evan Hertz on the subject about knowing the season you're in. She discussed striving versus uh, stretching, and I really enjoyed the way she broke it down. It was great. And after I finish listen, after you finish listening to this video, I suggest you watch that video, and I'll leave the link in. Um, the description. She talked about hearing from God and trusting him as you're navigating um, the different seasons that you are going into. But one thing I wasn't expecting to hear from her is how to trust yourself enough and God enough to take a chance and move forward when you don't hear an exact word from him. And so I had to re she encouraged me and then I had to remind myself about some things I wrote a long time ago and things that God has been putting on my heart lately and it really encouraged me. So I want to encourage you. And when she talked about moving forward um, in the direction that you feel led, she didn't mean like not asking God about what his his will for you is, but he, she meant like taking that first step. And I think I even talked about that on Saturday, if you watch my live prayers, how we have to step out, how God doesn't, uh, he can't move if the car is parked, that she really brought that point home and reminded me of it is that we, can trust the insight that God gives us. We can trust his guidance, how he leads us when we know his voice. When we learn his voice and we stay in his word, then he He can correct us, direct us, and instruct us. And so the first thing that you have to do to know that the season that you're in is get the word of God in you. And that is what has guided me and that is what has kept me. And I love how she discussed that too. But if you've been watching my channel, and I have some notes here, so if you see me looking down, um, if you've been watching my channel for any time, you know that I talk about spiritual seasons and the seasons of life and how to navigate that and how to lean into it. And so that's why her video really um, got my attention. And I talk about navigating seasons of tra transition and change. And I believe it's because God is calling me to draw from my own wellspring of experiences and what I've gone through. Um, because I've gone through so many different seasons of change over the last seven or eight years. It's been just unexpected, if I'm honest, unwanted changes that I had to muster the courage and lean into my faith to navigate, to trust God through. And to, if I'm honest, it gave me a certain fear of the future. It made me think twice. I was such, I was so carefree. But when things happen that you didn't expect, that changed the course of your life. It makes you think and sometimes puts a spirit of fear on you to just go forward because you're thinking, for me at least, maybe something bad is going to happen. Maybe this is not going to work out because things didn't work out the way I expected. So I've been navigating life with this um, with this sense of fear that I've had to fight to just move forward, just to uh, make it through different seasons and different things that I've gone through. But in this season, in the past couple of years, I'll say like maybe two, three, maybe even four years, instead of dealing with and navigating unexpected change, unwanted change, I've had the opportunity to choose some things for myself again. I've had to the opportunity to decide what I'm going to do versus change that I didn't choose being thrust upon me. But I, what I realized is that a lot of that fear that I had was affecting my decision making and making me 
steady long, as it would say, steady long, steady wrong. And I've had to learn to shake that through a process. And so one of the things was like selling my house, for example. When I sold my house and I downsized to a condo, tied if you don't know, you don't go. And so that, those words, which are not in the Bible, but it's something that we've come up with, is something that has held people captive in expired seasons, especially Christian women in expired seasons, waiting to step into their destiny, waiting for a word from God, waiting for permission, waiting for it to be spelled out to them. But that's not really how life works. I look at everything that God has done in my life. It didn't work on just a word. Once I was in it, he began to give word. But a lot of times it was my faith. It was time and chance. I became an IT network manager and I operate in a career that is IT management because I went to school for computers because my ex-husband bought me a computer so I didn't have to go to the college to do my college papers. He wanted me to stay home with the kids. And so he said, you don't have to go to the computer lab. This is way back in the day, before 2000. So this is over 20 years ago. Stay home, I'll get you a computer. And I didn't know how to use the thing. And so I took a computer class to learn how to get this thing back in AOL, when AOL was a big deal and you had um, dial up internet. That's how far back I have been working on computers for over 20 years. But my first thing was to learn how to use it. And then I took another class and another class. And next thing you know, I was getting a degree in computer technology because I had all my electives and then I had all and all my um, general classes. And then I ended up um, focusing on IT, which is just crazy. I would have never thought I would have done a 20-something year career in information technology. But God, when we take a step, he works things out and we get stuck and God doesn't want you to get stuck. But when we go through time and chance, when we experience things in life, it has a um, the ability to shape the way we think. And God wants you to take that off. He wants you to break off those negative, wrong, erroneous mindsets and bring your mind back to God. And so that's an example. And when I asked God about moving, he gave me Isaiah 41.10 that says, fear not, I am with you. I will uphold you with my right hand of righteousness. And so when he gave me that word, as simple as it seems, I knew, I'm just going there, that I that God was going to be with me and that I didn't have to fear anything. It says, fear not, I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my right hand of righteousness. Now, because I had the word of God in me, he spoke that scripture to me because I read my Bible. I try and read through the Bible each year. But even if I don't do the yearly Bible, I spend time in the word. And so this scripture came out of my spirit and I knew it was God speaking to me through his word. And so I knew that I could go forward. I knew that he was with me and that he was going to be with me. And I had nothing to fear because he was going to uphold me. He was going to strengthen me. He was going to or be with me and he has been and so I needed that confirmation and it took that one word for me to sign the paper and to keep going so like many of you I am desiring another change in my life for me it's a slower pace in life which I've talked about so in this season many of you I know are thinking God I want to change I want something new and I do too. And I am in midlife. I will be 50 in May. And it marks a big season for me because I'm in the I'm half a century. My children are grown, grown because I started early or than most women my age. And so I have a full grown adult children who have done college or decided not to go and to do something else with their lives and careers. So for me, I want a slower pace of life because I've been a mom for as long as I can remember. I've been a wife 
and and then even as a divorced mom of four adults life has always been about other people and that's good i'm, I'm a, i have a servant's heart i wouldn't change my children but because i've been on the go i really haven't experienced what it's like to just slow down and not to have a lot to do i was in ministry even though it wasn't paid it was almost like full-time or part-time serving at leadership and pastoral level ministry in my former church and working full-time and four kids that was a huge portion of my life all together at once <laughs> and now I'm like what was I thinking and so that being said I want a slower pace of life so I can focus more on things that really matter to me like my family I missed a lot of my kids life even though I was present I wasn't present every game everything I was there but I was always thinking about what I had to do next and so kind of in the present and focused on the next thing or the next task and I just want to slow down and be able to embrace the moments I want to do ministry more ministry and I want to enjoy the simple things in life that I love like um, sleeping in um, juicing doing yoga, going on hikes before I get my day started. Though it, it, I have a simple life. There's some women and I watch them and I have to pull back because I know that's not what I want. I do want the freedom, but I don't want to travel. I think it's Stephanie Perry. I love her. Um, she has a, a YouTube channel, over 100,000 subscribers about uh, black women who are want an easier life and who want to embrace ease. And I love that because so many black women, especially single black women or black women who have been married and divorced and have children and have to do a lot on their own, um, uh, we don't have a life of ease. Even if we have great jobs and careers, it's work when you're doing it yourself and you never really get to exhale, right? And so, and I know there's other women, but there's a gazillion black women because a lot of us are not married or we're divorced, you know, or we were never married is what I mean, but have children and those type of things. But anyway, I don't, I don't want to be an expat. I don't want to, I want to travel, but I don't want to live outside of the country. I want to live here. I want to enjoy the life that I have. And so um, I've been contemplating how to do this. And so some people want to travel. Some people want to do, I, I mean, want to like pick up their life and leave. I don't want to do that. I do want to travel, but I've been contemplating how to just live a simpler life, how to enjoy the life that I have here stateside, right? And the biggest thing I've been contemplating is when to walk away from my job that I've been on for almost 25 years. I feel like I'm ready after 25 years, but I'm not sure when to do it. I have a, a, a thing where I serve people, where I love people, where I care about how I leave people, the condition that I leave people. And so I know in my heart that by the time I'm 50, which is real soon, or sometime this year, I would like to do something new, something different. But truly, fear has kept me back. Um, I think about when I left my church. I knew it was time for me to go, as I said. But I was so scared because I did not have a direct word from God. And I was waiting for that because, as I said, I was taught that if you don't know that you don't go but when I look at my experience that has not been what has guided me into ministry I didn't even get into ministry um, by um, a word from God I was praying for my marriage and so I was going to uh, prayer intercessory prayer and driving another older woman who's one of my spiritual mothers um, because I was going to prayer and I was going through a divorce me and my husband were separated and I began we didn't get our marriage didn't come back together, but I began to pick up the spirit of intercession, the spirit of prophecy, the spirit of ministry. The Lord laid on me the mantle of teaching his word and preaching the word of God. And I wasn't looking for that. I was going after something else. So when I began to look at my experience, that's not how it happened was me just having a word. Although once I started going in a direction, like I said, I then got 
a word specifically like i've called you to be an evangelist i've called you to do this i've called you to preach i've called you to teach but it was in the moving and the going and in the serving and so I was scared to leave my church, but I knew I was ready. And like I said, I had been for a couple of years, but I continued to serve faithfully. I was waiting for God to speak to me. But finally, not because of the people, just but, but because I was ready to go in my spirit. And I knew that I wasn't going to be there any longer. I didn't see me moving forward in life and not just ministry, not like trying to climb some ministry ladder. I just knew that my season there was up even. Though. But I had to wait until I trusted God enough and I trusted myself enough that I went back to Isaiah 41 10 and I said God you're the same God that was with me when I sold my house and so I believe that word was not just for the sale of my house but I believe that word was for me you said in this season because I was concerned about the whole season and this new thing I was getting into selling my house to downsize because even back then I knew that I didn't want want to be in a big house and have a gardener and a housekeeper and all these things. I wanted to be in a condo where it came with the HOA because I'm in midlife and I what if I want to I wanted to bring my financial footprint down because I am not married and I'm doing it on my own and so how am I going to do this? I can't keep up that lifestyle if I decide to go and I don't want to be stuck because a lot of women get stuck because the lifestyle that their jobs have created and how do we get out of it? And so even back then I knew and so I, and I was planning for this so I reminded myself that he is the same God and that was with me and so I finally after wise counsel began to move forward and I put one step one foot in front of the other even though I was so afraid like am I leaving and am I not hearing from God am I rebelling I mean I had been there for over 20 years uh maybe four months shy of 22 years and i knew that god was calling me to go i went on and god was with me and things are different yes things are not what they were in my old season but change by definition means not the same and so change does stretch us like crystal evan hurt said it stretches us it's not the same i was a ministry leader i had just been ordained the year before i left and i'm leading ministry and i'm and i have been leading for years over a decade two ministries um and I walked away from that to start over. And so where I was a big fish in a small pond, I became a small fish in a big pond. And that was okay with me. And I counted that cost, but it was a new season this time and i'm ready to i know that i'm thinking about my job and i keep going back and forth and all of that and i thought about crystal's video that made me think about the process i've gone through and what i went through last time and i'm doing that thing where i'm striving in this season not to do or to become not to make something happen but to hear from God instead of simply trusting him and moving forward because I know that I, a new season is upon me. And like I said, of course, I want to do it gracefully and in consideration of other people, but I don't have to have everything figured out. I don't have, God doesn't have to show me everything for me to make a decision and to trust myself and to trust that if I make the wrong decision, God will check me and correct me. And even if I fail, hallelujah, that God is with me and he never fails and he will not forsake me. I can trust him that he will um, lead me and guide me if I obey him. And, um, and so the things that I struggle with, I'm sorry, is how am I going to take care of myself? Will I be able to get another job? Do I want another job? I really don't. And I don't want to do IT. It's not like I don't want to work, but I don't want to work for somebody full time and commit that time. If that's the case, I could stay where I'm at because I love my job. I just want to, and I love the people I work with. I just want to do something different. What if I fail at what I want to do, which is full time YouTube and ministry? 
But then this morning I read in my Bible when I was doing my daily reading Bible, Luke 12 was part of my reading and it says um, in uh, verses 30 and 31, and do not seek what you are going to eat and what you are going to drink. Do not be worried for all the nations of the world seek all these things and your father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom and these things will be added to you. And it reminded me that the things I'm afraid of, God has already figured out and he goes before me. And then that brought me back to Isaiah 41.10 and the verse that he gave me for this season of life. And so I want to talk about how to know the season you're in because that's what I said this video was going to be about. And so if you're at the end of a season, you'll know because you'll know that it no longer feeds you. You'll want more. It'll be that unshakable feeling that there has to be more. The grace that you once had to do a thing will kind of kind of lift. And let me explain what I mean. When I was ready to move on um, from my former church, every time I served, the grace was there. If the grace was there because God loves his people. The anointing was there, but I was dry. I was dry. It was like um, pulling from me, leaving me empty where it used to fill me up. And so this is how you know if you're at the end of a season. If you are at the beginning of a season, a building season, and you're doing a new, a new thing, there's a sense that you are settled or that you're ready to do the works. The work it takes, come what may, trials, struggles can't take you out of your place, cannot shake you out of your place and out of your faith. You're ready to take whatever uh, may come. You're ready to take the next step. If you're in the middle of a season, you may be seeing growth, a season where you might be seeing growth. Don't grow weary because sometimes we want to leave the middle before we can get through the process. And so there is a process. We have to wait for God to complete the process to process us through. And so sometimes the enemy will wear us out. Things will wear us out because he wants us to faint. So you have to change your perspective and get rid of everything that is draining you and trying to talk you out of waiting on God and finishing the process. And sometimes processes get sh cut short. But one thing you don't want to do, you don't want to be, you don't want to stay in an expired season way too long. Like I did in the past when I had faced change that I didn't want and I didn't choose until I mustered up the courage. But what I did is I stayed in those seasons too long because I got sucker punched with life. And so life was passing me by and I was still waiting. And that didn't mean that I couldn't wait for the promise, but you don't get stuck. The Abraham had a promise from God, but he kept moving forward and crossing over from season to season and city to city. And he would settle and then he would move and the children of Israel moved around, even though they were waiting for the promise of God. And I got stuck and you don't want to do that. And so this is how you know your season. Those things will come. Those, those things will come and you might be in a waiting season and I encourage you to wait on God. But if you're at the beginning of a season and especially if you're at the end of a season and you're supposed to be in a new season going forward, then I, then I encourage you to hear from God, to pray and to know that you might hear from him in a different way than you are used. And I'm going to read something from my book, A Call to God's Daughters, because it's about prayer. So one of the ways, as you heard, when I knew um, what season I was in and that God was giving me the green light, it was because of prayer. But I'm going to share with you how to also make room for God to move in your new season so that he can lead, guide, and direct you. And you do that with open hands and open mind and an open heart. 
You pray according to what you know to be true about God and his will for you. And then you put your confidence in him and you take the next step forward. You allow him the opportunity to answer your prayers in ways that you could not imagine. Ways that he is going to answer them in the time that he wants to answer them. And I had to remind myself of that. And when I was reminding myself of that and encouraging myself in the Lord, I thought of what I wrote so many years ago. So I'm going to read that to you. And this chapter is called, Your Prayers Are Accepted. But as for me, my prayers to you, my prayers to you, O Lord, in the acceptable time, O oh God, in the multitude of your mercy, hear me in your truth and in the truth of your salvation. Psalm 69, 13. For those of us who have received Jesus as our Savior, our acceptable time for God to hear us is now. The Lord hears our prayers spoken according to his will, and he wants us to have confidence that he will answer them. First John 5, 14 and 15, which is one of my life verses, says this is the confidence that we can have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have, not gonna have, but we have the petitions that we have asked of him. The thing is, we won't always get the answers in manifested answers, like in our this side of heaven we have them in heaven it's already written but we won't always get the answers in the time in the way that we hope for them but we can be sure that god will answer us and this is about naomi no naomi had no hope for a better future for herself in moab or bethlehem but she still had enough confidence in god to pray for her daughters in law ruth and naomi uh, ruth and oprah before Naomi began her journey back home, she put her prayers and petitions before the Lord. She said to her two daughter-in-laws, go return each to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you might find rest in each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them and they lifted up their voices and wept. Ruth 1, 8 through 9. God used Ruth to answer Naomi's prayer above what she could ask, think, or imagine. Naomi prayed that the Lord would show her kindness, would show kindness to Oprah and to Ruth. She prayed that he would give them new husbands and that they would find rest with their husbands. Naomi did not know how God would do it, but she knew that a loving God would not want these women to have to not have husbands she knew that they that a loving god would want them to have husbands another chance at love a family and children she knew that it wasn't god wasn't god's will to punish them for their sins or the mistakes of their husbands naomi prayed according to what she knew about God's mercy and his will. She left the rest to him, as I'm sure she had done many times before. The, you, don't not, you do not have to know the perfect will of God to pray the perfect will of God. You only need to pray according to the truth you find in his word, what you know of his character, and what has been revealed to you by his spirit. Then put your trust in, and your confidence in the Lord, knowing that your prayers are accepted and that he will answer them. The Lord answered Naomi's prayers for Ruth through Boaz. When Naomi saw that Boaz favored Ruth, she realized that the Lord was answering her prayer, her prayers in his own way, in his own time, above what she asked. Her mother-in-law, Naomi, said to Ruth, where have you been gleaning today and where did you work? Blessed be the one who took notice of you. She told her mother-in-law whom she had, where she had worked and she said, the man's name that I work for today is Boaz. Then Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, blessed be he of the Lord who has not forsaken his kindness to the living or to the dead. The Lord blessed Naomi through her own prayer for Ruth who continued to care for her mother-in-law after she married Boaz. 
the Lord wants to answer your prayers. However, those prayers require that you trust God even when you can't understand him, when he doesn't give you the whole picture and line everything out. And so, beloved, this is how you make room for God. You pray according to what you know of his will, according to what you know of his truth, according to his word, according to his character, according to how the spirit leads you. And then you put it in God's hand. And you make room for God to move by taking the next step. So if you are in a season like me where you're contemplating and you're dealing with all the what ifs, what if this and what if that, I want you to stop. I want you to trust God. Remind yourself what you know to be true of God and then pray from that place and ask God what your next step is. I'm going to do the same and keep joining me for my journey here as I um, transition uh, in this next year. And so I hope this has blessed you. And if you need more resources, if you would like to get this book, um, there's a link in my bio, A Call to God's Daughters to Step Into His Lab. Lab, Love, Acceptance, and Beauty based on the book of Ruth. And it's not just about the identity, how it shapes our identity, but it's about how it shapes our faith, his love, acceptance, and beauty through every season of life. And then there's five clarifying questions for every season of life. That is a free downloadable guide that will help you um, lean into God, let go of what he's telling you to let go of and hold on to what he's telling you to hold on to. It'll walk you through some questions so that you can identify your season, that you can give it a name. Mine is a new beginning. My, you know, those are words, but sometimes it helps to not just put it in four boxes, winter, spring, summer, and fall, new beginning, transition, end of season. Sometimes it helps to give it a personal name, describe what you're going through and why you're in this season and that will help you. And that guide will walk you through that. And so that's free to you. God bless you. If this video has been a blessing to you, please subscribe. Please share this with someone else and give it a thumbs up. Until next time, God bless you.